Okay, this is a Bedrock Edition uh, Infinite XP farm, basically. Uh, you're going to want to know how this works, or really if it works. I'll just show you what I've got here. It can be made out of any block, as you can see. I made it out of dirt because I was poor at the time. What it, do what it does is you get, um, you get bamboo, cactus. Get it all sorted going into a furnace, which smelts the cactus into green dye, and dispenses it out here whenever it's going. As you can see, I haven't had it going for some time. I actually haven't played this world in some time. I just wanted to let you know how it works. This keeps the hoppers from actually getting the stuff, but it might not start. And over here, well, I'll put the lever on the other side. Over here, it's going to start making infinite cactus and bamboo, which is going to fuel all of this into this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Watch my levels. And 33 from 1. 39 from 2. The thing about this is that it stores XP, so I'm going to continue gaining a large amount of levels for every single one that I pull out. It's insane. This is the OP farm that I am showing you how to build today. But first you should know, and I will repeat this later in the video, that to get this farm working to this level, you will have to AFK it. The only thing about AFKing it is you can't be moving around or anything, because if you get out of a certain distance, this, the sand blocks that make this thing work will break, and it's making the entire getup not work. So AFKing will not work if it breaks, and you won't know if you're not checking. Best way to AFK it is to get glass to where you can see the machine and encase yourself. Otherwise, if you use other kinds of blocks, it may break since it, you're not actually viewing the blocks move. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. Anyway, time to get to the, to the actual making of the machine. All right, to the build. Uh, ignore all of this. I did not do this. Anyway, what you're going to need is what's in my inventory here. You're going to need multiple of most of these items. You can use any build block. I chose netherite because I'm a creative and I'm going to do what I want. But what you need to focus on immediately, especially if you're in survival, which you should be, because I don't see why you need an XP farm in creative. You're going to need to get these two items. Bamboo. It's probably one of the hardest items to get early on in game. Uh, even in game, and if you don't find a jungle, it's incredibly difficult to get. You have to search pretty much every underwater boat thing. Uh, cactus is a simple thing in any desert. You may get trouble getting a desert, but normally people don't have that kind of problem. I have, but whatever. Anyway, to the belt. Follow what I do. Not the blocks if you need to, I'm not doing it. I'm going to need to get this going. This is what's going to make the machine run. This right here. I'm going to need to put this one right here. Da, 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 da. Make sure it's facing the right way. Go ahead and turn that lever off, or basically turns it on, but you know. Going to need to put your sticky piston in. Placing sand immediately. And put your wooden blocks here. This is the one that's going to put your bamboo on because this is going to fuel the furnace. The furnace that makes your XP. Anyway, you can make the outside out of glass. You can do anything you want to make the blocks look good. You can change any blocks. You don't have falling blocks like gravel or anything, you know. The usual. The next thing you're going to need to do. Place this, block this, block, and then you don't have to put these two, I just do because it's ornamental, and then a piece of redstone. And if you encase this in like I'm going to, you're going to need to to get the bamboo to be you know, not just being yeeted over the side.
And it's always good to go a little high, because if you don't, like I said, it's just going to be yeeted over the side. And that's really annoying because it doesn't get to the hopper or to the furnace. And if it doesn't get there, what's the real point here? Okay, the next thing is the hopper. The hopper, oh, one last thing. If you don't have something in front of this sand right here, it will break every time. Watch this, I'll show you. Immediately broken. So if you don't have one piece of a block of some type right here, on this block, adjacent to that block, it will break every time. So let me get my sand back. Now watch, let me get my... No, 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 it's going to go directly into the furnace. Right? No, 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 it has to go further down. Sorry, a while since I built this. Okay. Now, in Bedrock, I don't know if you have to do this in Java, but you have to crouch to get the hoppers to actually go to where you need them to go. And now, it will fill. And boom. Made. Yes. Now, what you have to do next is place... I'm just going to place a temporary block. Then your furnace. This will distribute, not exactly evenly, but it will make it to where it works correctly. It will put bamboo in each. Trust me, you know it works. It's just really not even for some stupid reason. Yeah. Anyway. On to the next build going to need to elevate basically this entire structure to make it to where you can have hoppers go directly into this. So sometimes you just want to go ahead and place some to get you kind of going. Because, at least for me, it's kind of hard to orient yourself exactly how high you need to make it. Alright, now that's placed, I can kind of orient myself to where the blocks and pistons need to go. I know for a fact that this has to be on the bottom block, which is one block above the bottom piston. So if I know that, then I just go down one, place the piston. And I know that the piston is one block above where the redstone goes. If I can get that oriented, I know the rest by heart. And you can just follow me in the video. Remember, I said I, it has to have the thing to make this go continuously, otherwise it doesn't work. 
Let me look over here real quick. Okay. Extend one, down. Extend one, down. Now I need this one. Go ahead and place my sand. Now the great thing about this is if I do mess up and make it too far or something, you can always just add an extra hopper. Learn from my mistakes, children. Learn. Oh gosh. So much iron. Do you know how much iron this will be in survival? Nevertheless, it'll work. The unique thing about cactus is that it will break quite easily if it is touching the side of a block, say this one here. I cannot place the cactus like this. It just won't let you. you remove that block, boom, works. If I place this block here, it breaks the cactus immediately. So you have to kind of work around it in a way. The way I normally do it is just kind of block up. Because you, you want to keep it from getting needed to the side. And this basically does it by pushing it forward and giving that basically it's the only option that it has. The great thing is, you can usually place a block here and it'll grow, but it breaks anyway and it just gets pushed. Now just like the other, you kind of want to go above because it can still get kind of pushed. a bit. And you want to make absolute sure that it goes where you want. Otherwise, what's the point? It's not going to get filled. What are you voting for? Honestly. And this is the basis of the machine. It's basically built. Let's test her out. This will make your infinite XP. Now, if you want, you can place a torch here and a torch here to keep this going. And as you can see, I failed. Because I did the thing I told you not to. Without knowing. What a teacher. No wonder it wasn't making. Let's watch it do its thing. Immediately. I think that one was destroyed by the gecko. Oh well. You can't actually avoid that one. That's why the cactus is a lot slower than this one. But if you just leave it AFKing on this side for just a bit, it all works out in the end. The thing about this machine is that it will work immediately. It will start charging up the XP immediately. But you won't get the same effect how I was getting before, where I was getting like 17 levels every time I pulled one out. Instead, I got, you'll get, like, a very, very small amount of experience. Which is why I said earlier, you don't need to charge it. And you can't AFK this machine without the next step. Adding the dispenser. The dispenser allows it to take all of this out. And keeping it running without you having to interfere at all. Making it automatic. What I normally do is I dig out a spot. Uh, kind of big sometimes. Normally, you want it to be underground, that way it's out of the way. You want to add a chest correctly. I hate this game. I seriously hate this game. 
uh, you are going to want to go just a bit deeper. So you can get one more dispenser. Well, let me go ahead and place that because that was annoying. One, dis one dispenser and one. And that will make all of it go into this. And you can have a redstone machine. Pretty simple. Just like the one that works on the other one. I'll do that. This is probably the easiest part of the build. You just need to dig a squat and place a few blocks. And after you get this going, the fences cover this up, and boom, it's done. You can just sit here and AFK this for hours. The thing is, you can also just keep it running overnight as you sleep, protected with glass over you. And when you wake up, you'll be getting stonks for days, weeks, years, as long as, the, as, long as these furnaces never break. The experience will continuously be charged into this, and you'll be getting massive amounts of levels. It's probably the prettiest one of these I've built, honestly. And that is basically what I have in store for you today. This will go on forever. Just remember, never go too far while it's running, because that sand will break outside of render distance. And this is where I leave you today. Chitfoot this